Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Help with Natalie Cuomo. I'm very excited to be here today with comedian Fahim Anwar. How are you? Very good. I'm excited to be here. Yes, We were just talking before the cameras were rolling. This is one of those things of like, you know, seeing each other on the internet from afar because I'm L.A., you're in New York. Yeah. So I feel like we know each other, but we've just never actually been in the physical room together. Yes. And you guys are witnessing history. It is history. This is exciting. You know what? I was I was watching. I was immersing myself in your work. Holy shit. That's like, <laughs> that's one step above watching. Immer- immersion is like it's more level. than I can ask for. Wow. I was honestly. Were you're... you watching via MetaQuest? Is that how like. <laughs> yes. Yes. It was intimate. Holy shit. Um, no, I honestly, I'm so impressed with like how physical your comedy is. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Thanks. It's interesting because like I don't read as someone who would be that on stage. I don't even read as a comedian sometimes. Like I'll be at a party. Like I don't really, I'm kind of a, I don't know. I think you read as a comedian. Well, because we have banter and sure. this is a podcast. And, Fine. And sometimes you have like certain energy, like chemistry with certain people. Mm-hmm. But if I don't know anybody at a party, I just kind of keep to myself and blah, blah, blah. Same. And people would have no idea that I'm fucking moonwalking on stage and doing some shit. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like there's a time and place for things. Yeah. Well, I I was like, I don't know. I feel like New York, a lot of people limit their physicality. Mm. I, I don't know if it's because the stages are so tiny. I agree. But I have a theory, and that's one of them. Yes. What is your other theory? Uh, I feel like it's probably... New York, there's a lot of ball breaking. Mm. I'm not a big ball buster. Yeah. You know? There's a big culture of like... Roasting. Roasting, hammering the nail that sticks out a bit. Mm -hmm. I think if you're a guy who moves around on stage a lot when you're a younger comic, you probably get like brow beaten quite a bit from like, like, what are you doing? Fucking moving around? You doing the warm up there? Right. And so I feel like those habits aren't rewarded as a younger... Uh. You know what I mean? I'm not saying they're super rewarded in... LA, but the stages are bigger. Yeah. Um, There's definitely more of a stage presence to a lot of LA comics because, like, you have to like own this space. Like, the stages are genuinely larger. They are larger. And at the clubs, the the clubs seat more people. Yeah. Most of the time. Yeah, like uh, you know, I'm at the comedy store a lot, and the main room is the biggest room. It's it's like three hundred fifty, right? Yeah, yeah. three fifty. Giant stage. Yes. It's kind of fun. I'm just like swimming around in them, like yeah. going back and forth. Like, yeah. why not use it? It's very fun. Whereas sometimes you do in New York, I've done shows and it's like you're on a soapbox, you're literally. You fall off. Yes. Like, I'll have a bit. I'm like, I can't do this bit. I don't have enough room. I mean, whereas I've talked to a lot of New York comics and we're like, we need to tell ourselves to walk around. <laughs> That'd like, be funny. You, walk you, around, walk around. <laughs> funny, like, you using the stage, just like moving to this side of the stage and then standing in one place and delivering the joke and then moving to another <laughs> side and then delivering the joke. I mean, these are all broad strokes if <laughs> yeah. we're, if we're yeah. like stereotyping sure, LA versus sure. New York comedians. But there is a romance to the New York comedian that like can be razor sharp. And you know what I mean? Yeah. And can like move. It's like the Adele of comedy. Right. Adele doesn't have to fucking hop on roller skates to move a stadium. Yeah. She's just standing in one place. How do you like get into your high energy zone if you're not necessarily in a good mood before you're set? Uh... Uh, I am like I'm never like you're never in a bad mood my valleys are pretty low or are, are pretty shallow I'm lucky that my I don't like what the hell yeah is that bad no that's lovely yeah it's not as cool though no no it's definitely be, like, cool fucking, you know this is tortured artist no like... I think that depression is romanticized so much that it pisses me off I'm like why are you romanticizing this shit mm. you know yeah it's like that's not fair it's not fun to be depressed I know, but it, like when you watch it in a movie though, or a docu series, <laughs> you're like, "Oh man, how cool!" It adds to the lore. Yeah, you don't want to see a, a biopic on some guy who's very, very well balanced. I was watching like Mitch Hedberg's uh, Comedy love Central. Mitch. I love. He's my all-time favorite. I was watching it last night, and I love when like he's like sitting on the stage because he's like obviously pissed. Yes. And then I'm just like, wow, it's crazy to think that like he was experiencing this, and he's just like the greatest and he's just like sitting there like it's not going the way he wants to he's just like are you kidding me man <laughs> i'm like in your head and in my head i'm like you are the greatest of all time but it, it's it's 
so important as a comic to make sure you're like always like watching these things so you know like this is normal yeah i think uh especially when you're a younger comic or you're a generation after or a couple generations after you just like hold these comics in such high regard and you yeah. just see them as these, like idols or deities and that they were always this thing like you think bill burr was always bill burr you think louis was always louis you always th you know what i mean mm -hmm. and then it's refreshing you'll see these glimpses of like this thing happened to me where uh, I saw Evening at the Improv. I had Hulu. Yeah. I don't know if it's still on there or not. But they, so there was a series called Evening at the Improv mm -hmm. where, remember Comedy Time? Mm -hmm. It was almost like Comedy Time for the 90s. Yeah. Where th three to four year comics, this would be their first kind of TV thing. So you see them do five minute sets. And there's legends. So you'll see like Martin Lawrence. You'll see uh, Sandler. You'll see Ellen. And you watch them do, like, I'm watching Martin's Evening at the Improv. And it's like, all right, Martin's great. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, like, he wasn't Martin yet. Yeah. And it's cool to see Martin as, like, a three-year comic. You go, oh, he went through that step, too. Yes. So it's a process. A hundred percent. He didn't just fucking start at Martin. Yeah. So that's refreshing. Like, even Bill Burr. Watch early Bill Burr. Like, Bill Burr's always been great. But, like, there's been this progression and ascension. Yeah. Do you feel like there was a moment in your career, like you've done like JFL, you've done late night, you have these specials. Do you feel like there was a moment where you're like, all right, this is happening for me? Mm -hmm. What do you mean this? Like you're like, I am, I'm, you're like, I'm doing it. Was there like a moment? Like, like, um, you're like, I am I'm a, doing it. I'm a comic, baby. Yeah. Like, did you have that? That's so funny. Like, I like, like I just bust into Jim Carrey. <laughs> Mask, mask quotes. I'm like, <laughs> Somebody stop me. I'm, I'm on fire, baby. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's counterintuitive, but like kind of the era we're in right now mm -hmm. where I think once I kind of took my hopes and dreams out of like the Hollywood Bowl, you know what I mean? When you were just waiting on so many other people to like validate you yeah. and to open the gate for you to be seen because before you weren't even allowed to be fed to people they didn't even know about you unless comedy central signed off on you right or netflix signed off on you you had to have these like conglomerates tap you yeah and only then could you step out of the shadows otherwise you were just like rocking whoever you were at the comedy clubs but it's a drop in the bucket nobody would ever know it's like a tree falling in the forest and nobody knowing. Yeah, but so, you kind of have like you have a following and you have. But I'm talking. Both. But this is this is recent though. True. So, okay. So like you know, I came up in Seattle, and so this like social media shift is like a fairly new phenomenon. Right. So before you you had to you had to do like a Comedy Central half hour. You had to like do a late night. That was the only way you could even get in front of yeah. civilians. You know right. what I mean on a large scale, and so if. Th those opportunities were never afforded to you. You were just kind of fucked. Even if you were really talented, mm -hmm. there was no way to reach the people. And now with like Instagram, YouTube, it's just so empowering. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, I'm finding an audience and I don't need that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's nice. Like, I, I'm, I'm plugging away. I'm doing pretty well here. If you guys want to come along and scale this. Sure, if you have a business opportunity that makes sense for both of us, okay. But it's it's no more like, here's my five. Do you like my five minutes? Mm. I can change it. I can, I can. It's too edgy. The first one, I can ditch it. Or I could put it in whatever you want. Yeah, mold me. Why do you think comics like I do agree that like we've taken back our power with social media? Why do you think comics do? St I do still feel like comics are like, please, it's this showcase, book me. Uh, what is it? It's um, Stockholm syndrome. <laughs> yes, or it's it's you know it's the same thing of as why like some women return to abusive boyfriends or yeah yeah. I think so. Okay, tell me more. It's just the relationship they know and it's a validation they want and even though it's unhealthy wow. and toxic, they they still have it. I like this. And also I think, um, I mean I've had this thought too. The reason, okay, I got into stand-up comedy because I loved SNL. Yeah. Okay, I was like 18 or 17. Mm -hmm. So that's why I got into it. A lot of time has shifted. And like the things, the goals you wanted when you first got into a thing you still have that because like your mind is still like 13 year old you even yeah. though society shifts and the industry shifts 
So sometimes I have to remind myself, I'm like, is this the logistic, is this the logical play for 2024? Or is this 13 year old me what 13 year old me wants? That's insightful. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like me doing SNL now is not as, uh, it's not as big of an ROI as like back when I w was 17. Yeah. Because SNL was fucking huge. It was a kingmaker. Same. Yeah. Now, sometimes it can be like comedy timeout a little bit. Yeah. Unless you're like fucking Ariana Grande or like some pop star. You got to have some extra shit. Right. Or you got to be like cute. <laughs> <laughs> you do have to be cute on there. You got to be cute. You got to be like early 20s. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's yeah. a very niche. But back in the day, you were on it. Fucking boom. Sure, because it was the only place you it's could the go only place. to see it. Yeah. You didn't have TikTok. You didn't have. There, it's just so fractured. It's so funny because, like, if I'm on a lineup and someone puts my credit as TikTok, I'm like, how fucking dare they? You can do they? that. What? You can do that. I can have social media as my. I'm like, when they do that, I'm like, they don't respect me. I have them put LinkedIn for my <laughs> credit. You may have seen this guy on LinkedIn. He has a lot of network connections. I don't know. I feel like this weird, like. I don't I shouldn't care about that. And whenever I say that to anyone who has like the opposite, like a ton of credits and not a following, they're like, dude, all I want I is wish. your following. I don't care about the credits. And I'm like, ah, that is. Yeah, it's grass is always greener situation. Sure. But from the outside, I would say I think what you have is more valuable than. Yeah, it's it's almost like pining to have a silent movie credit. Yes. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, it is. And I like the comparison that you made of what? Of like it's like an abusive like oh for wanting, sure like the validation of like an abusive person like how do you shift your thinking like you've been wanting this thing for 15 years yeah and then suddenly you're just gonna like oh no i don't want that anymore yeah how do you shift it how do i shift it you're very confident in your performances you're like a very confident performer that's nice i was Thanks. watching it i was like damn like you are you are confident. I think. What do you say? What do you say to yourself before you go on stage? Uh, well, I've been doing it a long time. Yeah. There's that. Yeah. I wasn't always, so it's been a progression. I've watched a lot of it. I know, but I start. <laughs> I, well, I started when I was 18. You know, I've been doing I don't know it like 20, 39. Really? Yeah. Okay. I did it. So, yeah, I was 18 when I started. So I've been doing it like 20. One years. That's amazing. It's a long time. It definitely shows. That's what I love about stand up is like Same. stage time doesn't lie. You and see that's someone the most on stage. Thing. It's like seeing the rings on a tree yes. when you cut it up. Like you can't fake yes. fifteen years. You can't fake twenty years. Yeah. It's very cool. Yeah. Because there are so many art forms that you can like you can hide bad acting and editing. You can you know what I mean? Yes. There's so many shortcuts in other entertainment mediums. Stand up is just the person on stage. Yeah. And even if you're super famous, those la those like fame laughs die down in the first minute or two. I agree. It's the most uh, I don't know democratic, I think, or just justice filled art form. No, because like your writing is great, but in addition to that, like the way you perform, because like I was watching a bunch of stand up last night, and I was and like your stage presence, I was inspired by it. Oh wow! I was like, damn, like you really have a good stage presence. Thanks. You I, seem like you hate that that I'm saying this to you. I no, don't it's very know unexpected. Why. You know why? what I mean? Well, that you've actually researched my comedy and is such. Is that bad? No, it's great. I don't know because I felt like. I don't know, because I have the special coming out and you yeah. do the podcast rounds and that's part of it because yeah. you want to hopefully draw from different audiences, right. juice the algorithm once it's on YouTube. Hopefully, who knows, you know, Algo Gods, please right, right. propagate my special into feeds. Algo Gods. Algo Gods. <laughs> Every time I shoot something into YouTube, I just I go, please, Algo. Please. I have Mr. Beast photos on a shrine and I yeah. go, please, Algo Gods, <laughs> take my offering. and Five times a day. Five times a day. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, that's so like... Yeah, you five, you gotta I referenced your special there. I know five times a day. Yeah. Wow, kill me. <laughs> so, but when you do these rounds, it's almost like having someone drive you to the airport. You know, it's a necessary evil. Like yeah. I, I have to. I'm driving you to the airport. Sometimes it feels like that when I'm trying to do podcasts to promote <laughs> yeah, yeah, my special. Yeah, yeah, I feel that. I'm like, can I do your special? Please, I right, need. Right, right. Like, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's all in my head mostly. So. I never think that when I do a special, especially with someone, or not a special, but like a podcast, with someone that I haven't met yet, mm -hmm. would do enough homework to like watch the stand up and then actually maybe connect with it and then actually have 
uh, observations. Yeah. And like positive things to say. So just surprising. I'm happy. Okay, sorry. Yeah, no, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. It is true that, um, I mean, I I like the plain stuff a lot. I appreciate, like the Fallon set. Oh. The neck thing that you oh. did was so impressive. Which one? The it's neck true pillow that thing? everyone stands up immediately. Oh yeah, yeah. And like the act out you did was so good. And Jimmy Fallon, he just like loved you so oh, much. Nice. He was just like, I was like sitting on my couch. And I turned to my fiance. I was like, Look at Jimmy. He is just so giddy right now. But that's Jimmy, though. That uh, no, I think he's not always like that. I mean, if you're doing stand up and Jimmy's just at his desk, like, <laughs> like you should quit comedy. If you get if you get, if you Jimmy, get a laugh from Jimmy, no, but like then he got up and he was just like he was going nuts. I was like, hell yeah. That's so great when you see the silhouette of just yeah. like you know what yes, I mean. Yeah, That's If you don't like get a silhouette, then maybe shit. you should go home and fucking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that be, be funny. You're doing a stand-up set and you just see Jimmy and you just you see the silhouette like it's not even moving. He's just like. Yeah, for four minutes, <laughs> it's not moving at all, and then you just see him like put a cigarette in his mouth and just go. He just lights a cigarette and you just see the burnt end of a just like a cherry, <laughs> and then you see him look at his watch. Yes. But he was such a pro. Yeah. I've done a few late nights. I've mm -hmm. done like two Conans and then one Seth. Yeah. And I brought my parents out to this one. That's nice. Yeah. Just be, I don't know. It was like a whole story around that. Like, What's I the just, story? Like, eh. So like my parents only saw me do stand up once. Really? Yeah. I was 18. Okay. It was a few months into starting. And then I, 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 I got uh, uh, the Apollo came to town. Uh-huh. The, what they, do you mean the Apollo came to They town? did like a touring thing. Okay. So they would go to different major cities and do the Apollo in that mm -hmm. city. So they came to New York and I got in. I auditioned. I got in. And then, so it was like me and like f 13 other people. Mm -hmm. 4,000 people to Paramount Theater. Seattle. Yeah, yeah. Huge. All right. I go out there. I'm up there for like 20 seconds. Start getting booed. Oh my God. 4,000 people I hear people those shows booed. are really crazy. Yeah, like no one goes to the Apollo to be passive aggressively quiet. Yeah, yeah. So so it's like boo boo boo. Siren goes off. So they see their son get booed off stage at at, at the Apollo, like in Seattle, and they're already not juiced about me doing stand up to begin with. Mm -hmm. So that was just like such a shitty experience. Like I was fine afterwards. Like I still love stand up, so I just kept on doing. I was like, eh, whatever. But I'm like, and that was such a shitty experience. I I just kind of tucked that feeling away i'm like eh, i don't want them to come see my shows they're not chomping at the bit to come see my shows anyways mm -hmm. but then enough time had passed where i'm like ah it'd be great to give them a celebratory kind of moment yeah so then i hit up the tonight show people i'm like hey can i and i submitted a tape and they're like this is great and then i brought them out so it's kind of like an it was like it was for my parents i didn't do it for me because the Tonight Show doesn't move the needle really anymore. You're ridiculous. The Tonight, if I got asked to do the Tonight Show, I'd literally like shit my pants. <sighs> yes, but again, like you've already got the. You have you have the Stockholm syndrome. Still. Yes, yeah. What you have on TikTok and all the stuff that you are ashamed of and all I'm that. I'm not ashamed of it. Yeah, I'm let's let's be real. Let's be real. <sighs> you hold these things in high regard that do. don't mean as much as the stuff that you do have right now. You're tr you're right. I need to be more appreciative. Yeah, I mean, whatever. Like, I understand yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it doesn't move the needle as much as like saying I have a ton of TikTok followers or something or, right. or IG, you know? Right, right. But it was a neat thing to give to my parents because it means a lot to them. Yeah. So I did it for our relationship. Yeah. I didn't do it for like, I'm a star now. Yeah. Well, how come you brought them to Fallon and not Conan and Seth Meyers. My dad's not like, I love Conan. Oh, he, they love oh, Fallon. Oh, Conan, so, you know, he's left, you know, he's just, <laughs> he's absurd. This, my dad's not a comedy nerd. Yeah. So I don't know, like, I love Conan is, like, yeah. my number one. I grew yeah, up with him. Yeah. Like, after The Tonight Show, that Conan show, yeah. very formative for me. Uh, but The Tonight Show, I mean, my parents are from Afghanistan. That's like a, that's fucking Coca-Cola. That is, they can wrap their head around Right. What the fuck I'm doing right. with The Tonight Show. So, okay, how is this special that you're putting out on February 28th, yes. which is already going to be out, yeah. so check it out, different than There's No Business Like Show oh, Business man. and The Hat Trick. This lady does her homework. Holy <laughs> shit. This is the most professional podcast I've done in a long time. <laughs> I'm not just saying that. <laughs> For real. I feel like Katie Couric over here. 
<sighs> How's it different? Well, okay, the hat trick. I know you're doing all the different rooms at the comedy mm-hmm. store, which is really cool. Yeah. Um. And then no business. That was like that's your first my one. first one. Yeah. That was on CISO. You remember that? No. So CISO was NBC's first stab at a streaming platform. Okay. Now they have Peacock, which is fucking huge. Yeah. I mean Peacock. Peacock's fun. It's like but remember, it's remember Netflix. Net what? Peacock, baby. So do you have something on Peacock or something? No, I'm just saying, like, Peacock is huge. <laughs> Peacock is huge, but Netflix is I'm like, I'm just trying to burn my bridges with Peacock for no reason. <laughs> so Peacock is their streaming service now, <laughs> but their first stab at it was this streaming service called CISO. Yeah. Which was just supposed to be comedy specific. Okay. So they had a slew of specials on there. Mine was one of them. They had The Office on there. I bl- Did they have The Office? I don't know. They just had, like, some comedy things. Mm-hmm. It was short-lived. I think it lasted maybe like two years, the streaming service. Right. So it was on there. And then Comedy Central licensed it for a bit. I don't know, whatever. It just allowed me to do my first special. Yeah. I think it's. I was able to rip it. And it's it's on my YouTube channel as yeah. well. I don't know if that's legal or not, but it hasn't been taken down yet. So, you know, watch it while you can. So that was the first one. I guess there's been an evolution. I feel like every time you do an hour, you peel... I mean, this sounds so pretentious, like inside the actor studio... You're peeling back a layer of the onion of who you really are. Yes. You know, you have the outside of an onion. You peel that layer off. Right. right. And like, it's still you, but it's the outer layer. Okay. And now you're into a, a meteor layer yeah. of what you are. And you do another special and you peel. The, do you see where I'm going? I do with, see where you're yes. going. Yes. So we're in like the third layer of this onion that i'm in so hopefully it's a big onion you can keep doing specials because yeah i only have so many layers before yes. i got nothing yeah i need a, I need a new <laughs> onion <laughs> then i transition into some other identity yes exactly and then, I, then i'm a new onion now you're a girl like i'm bi guys i got a new onion mm. this is I good comedy that. advice for people so what what are some topics you talk about in this new special uh i guess going through a breakup Okay. relationships like when you're in it it's so interesting you know sometimes you'll write these jokes when you're in a relationship mm-hmm. and they're great and then you break up and then you have to like change it to past tense yes and that's I've the hardest that. part you're before. like doing the jokes and you're like you have to throw ed on all the you know <laughs> you have to do like a quick pass in your brain before yes yeah I've, <laughs> I've, i definitely feel that yeah, you just have to like it's almost like find replace in your brain just to edit. the first time you do it and you're just like it almost feels like a new joke because you're just completely yeah. past tensing it. Oh yeah. And you're so used to saying it a certain way for so long and then now you have to do and then it kind of I don't know, you're able to do the stuff that when you were together and then you have some clarity after the fact. Yeah. Yeah. Really changes the whole act. It changes the whole vibe. Um, All right, so this is kind of... So that, I mean, it's not like, it just sounds like an email, like I'm in a folding chair and I'm like, and then you left and blah, blah, blah. Wait, what is the special called again? House Money. House Money. Why is it called that? Because uh, cause I'm at a point in my career now where like, I'm proud of the special and this is what I was touring with the past year and I wanted to take a picture of what I was, you know, I wanted to capture mm-hmm. the set, but I, I don't need it to do anything really. Like Really? Yeah, like I make money on the road. I'm pretty happy. Um, I don't need it to get billions of views and shit. Yeah. I want people to watch it. I want to like juice it and try to maximize whatever its potential is. Yeah. But I, I, I don't like, watch it, everybody, please. This will make or break me. Like I'm in a good place. This is amazing. How did you get to this place where you felt so happy with your career? I think, so I used to work at Boeing as an engineer. Yeah, okay. So, so yeah, so I was working in Long Beach. I think Beach. you left, I mean. Kind of. But the thing is, like, I was 17 or 18 when I knew I wanted to do stand-up, but I, I ha- my parents were going to pay for college, but only certain degrees. Mm-hmm. So I, I chose engineering because I wanted to be out in four years. So I just studied mechanical engineering, and then I applied to jobs in SoCal, and then I got a job because I wanted to be close to Hollywood. And then I got a job at Boeing in Long Beach. So I worked for, like, three and a half years at Boeing. And I would just, like, drive up and do stand-up. Um, but I was still doing stand-up throughout college, too. So, I mean, this was always the plan to do stand-up, but I had the regular job, and then and then when I left it, you don't know if it was the right decision or not. Mm-hmm. There's this water level rising, like, okay. You can't see the other side. Yeah, You're swimming, and you can't. You yeah. don't see shore. Yeah. So it's scary. And, like, a lot of your 
career when you do the arts or whatever it's a scary moment when you you don't you can't see the other side mm -hmm. and in the last couple of years just like i'm in a place where i'm more stable career-wise you know i'm pretty cemented I, i get up at all the top clubs in la uh i make decent money i'm, I'm good wow that's pretty good that's a good baseline This is great. you know what i mean i like what i do artistically wow I get to I get to talking to you know I get to isn't don't you I know you want things in life and all that shit and career things and yeah but do you ever just think about what you are already able to do and what you have yeah are you ever on stage and you're like wow I get to do this definitely yeah, yeah. well wow I guess like the toxicity of my illness in my brain mm, is yes. like how long do I get to do this what if I don't get to continue to do this what if this money gets taken away from me what if i don't get to continue to tour what if i don't get what about these places what about what these people are doing like what about like i want to keep improving i want to get to this point like what about like those voices i'm sure you had so much time to make them go away those don't have to be bad those are still healthy voices though yeah right because they drive you i mean i have those too like yeah. like how do i keep improving or what do i want to talk about now what's different what um Yeah, you still want to get incrementally better and kind of advance your career and stuff, but not like a, holy fuck, this yeah. guy is falling. Yeah, it doesn't have to be catastrophic. It doesn't have to be catastrophic. It can be like a healthy catalyst. It doesn't have to be a 911. No, no, not at all. Okay. Yeah. I like that. I think so. So um, your parents are from Afghanistan. They are. Okay. And are you first generation? That's when I was <laughs> born here, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. And they weren't. They weren't. They're they're foreigners. They're fucking foreigners. How they respond when you're like, I'm going to do stand up. They loved it. They did. They were like, This is why we moved here. <laughs> oh, what style? My son will be physical comedian. <laughs> I don't want you to stand and deliver. Fuck the New York style. You you big stages for my son. If you're not sweating by the end of your set, you're no son of mine. <laughs> Pr no props. <laughs> It's a crutch. <laughs> do you have siblings? A what? Do you have siblings? A brother. What does he do? He's a magician. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> How funny would it be? My parents fuck up twice. <laughs> That would be crushing. They come from Afghanistan. One son's a stand-up comic and the other's a magician. And then they'd be like, what do we do? No, he's a dentist. Okay. So it's beautiful. That's... Beautiful. He took he took like, you know, all the praise and like all the heat off of me. It's yeah, great. Yeah. yeah. He walked so I could run. That's really kind of him. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I'm a fucking engineer at the end of the day that's not using the degree, so that's not bad. Yeah, you got the degree, plus you're successful, so you're fine. Yeah. I was thinking about calling my special successful disappointment yeah but then people don't like i don't know how to sell, spell successful sometimes or disappointment, or disappointment so and it's just, wordy yeah so you have to, that this is the other thing when you self-release specials and especially for like keyword searches and stuff you just have to make it like mr beastie seo friendly and just, you really like mr beast no but i just use him as like an archetype for like the youtubeification of art mm, i always joke around yes like i mean i have this joke i want to be like the hardest part about being a youtuber is never being able to close your mouth <laughs> i had the worst experience i was like i'm gonna try making like a youtube blog right hey guys oh that was another joke too like i just want to be able to make a career a living without having to go hey guys yes so i take out my phone i'm like in the car with my fiance dan and i'm like he's driving And I'm in the passenger seat. We're like on the Williamsburg Bridge, but it's like a lot of traffic. And I like take out my phone and I'm like about to make a video. And I swear to God, there's like a car next to us, but it's like bumper to bumper. Mm -hmm. And this guy just yells out and he's like, you're ugly. And I was like, and like, I'm like, a New I'm born in New York. I like turned my camera around and I was like, what did you say? Yeah. And then you go, um, my vlog can wait. I know. What the fuck you say? <laughs> I know. And then they literally drove around to the other side of the car and they maced the driver's side it was fucking, what it was fucking crazy the guy was like i'm gonna kill you they followed us for like five minutes it was like the craziest 
I don't understand the logic of these lunatics. They shout you're ugly. Yes. What you say? Oh, no one second guesses me. Time to get maced. They literally took out a giant thing of, of bear spray, the whole fucking car. We like called the cops in the car and we're like, uh, we just got like maced. The cops are like, where are you? We're like, we're driving. They're like, okay. They're like, do they have a gun? We're like, I don't know. They're like, where are you? We're like, oh, we don't know. And then we're like, okay, they stopped following us. We hung up. It was terrible. Did you capture it or no? I have like a blurry photo of the guy's face from when I turned my camera around, but I'm like, whatever. Damn. It was, it honestly, I'm always one of those people that would like instigate back with people and it taught me like, you can't do that. It's not worth it. I'm just like path of least resistance. I'm like, okay. Now I'm like, I will not like instigate with strangers. That was the most surprising thing that I've always been like, you know, like aggressive driver, like, like, fuck you. I've always had this thought, like, you ever see people, I feel like when people get drunk, mm -hmm. that's sort of like a mask off situation. It, you kind of get to the core of who they yeah. really are a little yeah. bit without all the things. And then when people are in cars, you see some car zipping around, yeah. you see them, it's like an old Asian lady, you go, oh shit. <laughs> That's that's you? That's inside. I love that. That's inside the sweet old lady. And then the joke is like, if you want real mask mask off, it's being drunk in a car. Yes. Then that's the real you. It's possible those people were drunk in the car. <laughs> You're ugly. Crazy. I would just be like. Then I went to the stand. I did a spot and they gave me He was water. there? He was with there. With the bear maze? Yeah. He was so just you like, You're over? ugly. <laughs> what is the best advice you ever received? Best advice, man, it's hard. I don't know if I have like a quintessential nugget of. No, no nuggets. Hmm. Do you do you have one? <sighs> I'm flipping it. I guess. I mean, people, people, I ask this so much. That what? The best advice you ever received. Like yeah. I'm, I'm getting constantly filled with people's uh... nuggets. I guess the best advice, I like. I mean, I like, you know, being present and minding your business. Don't take people's advice. Those are all three good ones. You know, okay. This isn't those this isn't one that was like personally told to me by someone I know. But I saw this Will Smith video okay. talking about relationships or whatever. And I like it spoke that. to me. Uh-huh. Where he's talking about a lot of times in relationships, your partner will be like, I want you to fill my cup. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they need you to fill their cup. Mm. I'm butchering the, whatever it is. But the gist of it is you're both complete people already. Yeah. You're both fine and like well adjusted and, and you're enough mm. as is. And you choose to live your lives together on parallel tracks. Yeah. Rather than I need you to make me whole. You know what I mean? I like that. Yeah. So it's like. You're both enough and you're choosing to live life together. And it kind of feeds into this other thought I've had about like just the way men are portrayed in rom-coms and shit. Like whenever it doesn't work out or a girl leaves a guy's life, he's, he's always like at her doorstep like, I can't sleep. Yeah, I'm a, I can't eat without you. Yeah. And like he's a fucking like he's shitting himself and he has like long fingernails and a beard because <laughs> that's like the romantic version. Yeah, like, like if you're a woman, that. yeah, like oh my god, his life is ruined without me. That's so romantic. Mm -hmm. I fucking broke his brain. He's like a shell of a man. He's not. He's in a mental asylum because that's how cute I am. Oops. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So that's like the rom com version. That's that's alluring. But I mean, I always say the like for me, this would never sell a lot as a Hallmark card. But to me, true romance, the card would say, uh, I'd be fine without you, <laughs> but I don't want to. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. So that just shows like you're a healthy yeah. individual, but you still choose. I, that doesn't mean I don't want you in my life and I still prefer this. I feel that. Yes. But that's not that. as romantic as like... <laughs> Uh, why come back yeah uh. yeah okay i was gonna destroy his life if i left i i definitely i have such a vision of a of a, a romantic comedy where there's a guy with a sandwich sitting outside waiting growing old yeah yeah it's funny my dad uh had this ex girlfriend and he went to we were all at dinner like lunch 
and he went to the bathroom and then i was like sitting alone with a girlfriend and she just leans in she's like i want your father to want me i don't want him to need me (laughs) i was like that's kind of the same thing though it's the same thing yeah obviously they didn't work out he found someone else but oh it's it, I remember it so vaguely. I'm like, you didn't give her enough tips. I was like, you why didn't... is this bitch telling me this? <laughs> this is crazy. Did you, what did you say? I was like, I was I was like in college. I was like, well, it's good. It's good. I was like, like I'm hungry. <laughs> was was it like a Russian accent? What was that? Um, she was from Brazil. <laughs> oh, okay. I want your father to want me, not to need me. Any tips? <laughs> Um, uh, um, be yourself. <laughs> Can you pass the aioli? <laughs> yeah, I was like, gonna have the bread. <laughs> I was like, okay, thanks, bitch. It's your dad, man. Yeah, he he was he was killing it on the speed dating. Oh shit! Yeah, he's he's good, man. Speed dating. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel like it's difficult to date as a person that tours? A little bit. I feel like. Everything's momentum. Yeah. Everything in the everything in life is momentum. Yeah. And timing. Relationships too. Like mm-hmm. you'll be talking to someone, you're building this thing, and then I'm in Austin for two weeks and right. you're like, Hey. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's hard to recapture whatever that momentum is and it's like, What? And it's so sometimes when you're on tour a bunch, it it kind of like deflates whatever you have going on. Um but I'm off tour now just because I'm trying to build a new hour. Yeah. I'm not really like out that much except just to like do this promo run for the, the special. Yeah. So maybe when I'm in town more, I have like better opportunity for that. Yeah. But also, I don't know. I'm in this weird place like because I was chasing comedy for so long. You sort of have to put these milestones that happen to real people much earlier in life when you're pursuing the arts and stuff. You kind of have arrested development a little bit. Yeah. You, you hit these milestones way later in life because you're chasing this thing that's like very hard to do. So things that are normal for other people are kind of like weights if you're an artist unless it's the perfect person um so i never my brain was turned off to like uh getting married or you know i'm like distraction kind of like i need i need to i need to reach escape velocity before i can even like entertain these things yeah you know i'm living in a studio apartment in k-town i'm like 30 so you know what i mean i'm like right i'm not trying to fucking Let's get married. Like I'm, I'm living in a fucking. Stu- you know what I mean? Like yeah. I know studio here in New York is like typical, but in LA, that's not. Really. You would have a one bedroom out there. You yeah. Oh, I mean. Because when I say like, I was talking to Ari Shafir like years ago about living in a studio apartment in K Town, like that joke, I had this joke or whatever, and that works in LA because it's a different set of circumstances. But here. He's like here that you know people do that all the time. People have like five roommates in a studio apartment. Yes. And I'm like, oh okay, okay, thanks for the note. Uh, yeah. But just you're not where you want to be life wise, so that I'm not. My heart wasn't even open or my brain wasn't even open to like the possibility of that. Yeah. But the past couple of years with, you know, better financial situation and more solid footing career wise, now I am open to it. Right. So I'm not I'm not trying to do it tomorrow. Yeah. But at least, you know, once you have that like mental shift. Do you feel like if you say to a woman like I'm not interested in something serious, they believe you? Uh, what do you mean? Like, if I just if you were like seeing a, a woman and they were like, and like you guys are dating and you're like, hey, I'm not interested in something serious. Like, I'm focusing on my career. Does that like even register as information to a girl? Yeah, like I feel like a lot of the times they're like, oh yeah, that's a challenge. Oh maybe, <laughs> but I, I almost feel like it's a terms of service as a guy. Like, look, you scroll to the bottom <laughs> and you, you hit accept. Right. I told you the TOS. Yes, you did. It's, they hit it's, accept. It's right. It's right here. You're clear. I'm clear. Right. They can get as nutty as they want. You're like I, I, I told you in the thing. <laughs> You're like I yeah. have it right here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I have said that sometimes. So, sometimes, like, uh, especially when you're in the apps on stuff, so, some you'll see like. Certain girls, you're like, okay, maybe I can see this is more in line with maybe what I would want long term than other ones. You're like, oh, they're still cool, but maybe not. So maybe I would occasionally be like, I'm busy with work and stuff. I don't know if it'll. Yeah. And then I like being upfront yeah. with intentions and shit. Yeah. And then it's up to them. I think in your 20s, you kind of will maybe like gray area for so long. But then when you get older, you have you appreciate time and you value other people's 
you respect other people's time more. Right. So, and it's just way easier emotionally instead of living in this gray area. Yeah. So it's just like, hey, this is what I'm doing. Understand if you don't, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. What is your like comedy dream? Comedy dream? Perfect world. Just ascend as a stand up. Like, raise my profile a little more as a stand up. And then a sketch show. I would love to have a sketch That's show. Fun. And then everything else is kind of like icing. But yeah. if I could just do stand up and have a sketch show, what more do I need? Why LA instead of New York? Because I'm from Seattle and yeah. my parents are still living there. Yeah. And it's a quicker, it's pretty, it's West That's Coast. so nice. Yeah, I go back all the time. I have no like connection to the East Coast really. Yeah. It's so far. Yeah. And I'm never, I have no upbringing. I was like never here. So when you're doing stand up in Seattle and stuff, or just anywhere in a smaller market, you have to go to New York or LA. I'm like, oh, LA is just so much closer. Right. And it's closer to like Hollywood, which is like TV. And I'm like, okay. It just made more sense. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? Why did you do New York? Were you, did you? I grew up here. Oh. That's easy then. So, yeah. I actually lived in LA for a brief period of time before the pandemic. Where? In Hollywood. Were you, did you start here and then you were like, oh, let me live in LA? I started here. Then I like went there for like a few months. For like pilot season? No. No, Mm. I just. Have you done one of those? No. Interesting. Yeah. What's your experience with, have you done the acting stuff and like. Yeah, I actually originally want, like, my whole life I wanted to be an actor. Mm -hmm. And that's, like, since I was a kid, that was, like, my dream. And then I kind of gave up on it. You know, the dream's not over. I I acted for my whole life, you know. Then I just kind of gave up on it, got a lot of tattoos. Then I, like, worked in a coffee shop. And I was like, that's it. I just work in coffee. Like, it's fine. And then I went to this, like, I was seeing this guy. And he was, like, a director. Mm -hmm. I went to this movie premiere. And, uh with him and i'm like introducing myself to everyone like yeah i'm natalie i work in coffee and everyone else is like an actor and like a director and i'm like what the fuck am i doing and i've been thinking about stand-up for a while so like the next day i went to an open mic that was my first time doing stand-up and then i just went every day after that and then now i feel like with like the confidence i have from stand-up and like the success i'm finding in stand-up i'm starting to like audition for stuff again and all that but so it's like coming full circle but yeah Yeah, I think you're in a good place because I have a little bit of that too. I think when I was auditioning for stuff in my early 20s, I I didn't have anything. And you kind of want it so much because you have nothing. Yeah. And you just reek. You reek of needing it. Yeah. This is true in life. If you reek of of needing it. Just if you reek in in general, (laughs) reeking is not good. But if you reek of needing something, it's off-putting. I agree. So now that you kind of have success – in stand up and these other areas when you do audition you're coming from a place of like just doing your best here's your interpretation of it but you don't really need it like you want it yeah but you like you're just you, not like you haven't spent like it. a whole week studying these two lines uh a billion yeah. times and then and then like coming into the room like hey guys i do feel like every self tape i'm like i mean i feel like i have so many tattoos i do feel like I but mean, that's a that's a it look. is a that's look like, for sure. But I'm not like getting self tapes that the character descriptions like covered in tattoos. It's like she's a sexy teacher. I'm like, but it's not bonkers or whatever. Like I'm looking at you right now. You know what I mean? Like you read very yeah. normal. Yeah, just like the hands and the chest could be like, oh, we'll put that makeup on that. <laughs> yeah, I mean it depends on what the thing is. But like yeah. so many doesn't uh, Brad Pitt have fucking crazy you know what I mean I like, think it's so much more forgiving for men it's like uh, men it's like a little more normalized to have tattoos but even Pete Davidson is getting his tattoos removed oh but here's the thing as you are building as you yeah it's become it becomes less and less relevant true like, like you're a brand you and are. people want you yeah yeah that's kind of what they're hiring of. exactly if you were just a straight up actress then, then maybe this lot. could be a problem Maybe, maybe not. You know what I mean? Right. But if it's like you, people want, yeah. People yeah, are like, when people I want like hire Chris person. Rock to be an actor, or like, yes. like, yeah, like they kind of want Chris, that Chris Rock aura as well. Yeah. They it's not like that. we, it's not like we want Chris Rock the vessel. It's like both. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. What if I start getting a bunch of tats? Like, this is, you've inspired me. Yeah. You should. I don't think, I, I have nothing. If you were going to get one, what would you get? I, I don't even think I feel strongly about anything enough that I would want 
to get tattooed. How cheesy would it be? It would just be like a microphone on my shoulder. Everyone would be like, really that really telegraph like a dick. that I do stand up. <laughs> a dick. Yeah. You should um, get a microphone. A, a microphone here and then like a dick on this one. Yeah, it's like which is which. Yeah, yeah. Do you have a favorite city for Foreman? Mm. I actually hate that question. I feel like people keep asking it to me, so I'm just curious how you're going to answer it. Let's see. Favorite city. Cities I do well in. <laughs> Yeah, people cities, always ask cities that. Cities where like, I sell a lot of What's tickets. What's your favorite city to go to? <clears throat> I mean, New York's fun. I did Bell House last time I was here. That's fun. It was amazing. Yeah. Also, because I am an LA comic, I'm just I, that's where I am. You know. <laughs> yeah, I'm an LA comic, and New York is so cool. Yeah. I don't know. I think there's this romance with scenes that you are you view from afar. I definitely and think you that, respect, yeah, and you're just not there very often, so you're not entrenched in it. Like I know, I know Norman, I know List, I know Sam and stuff, but like I'm not entrenched in the. I follow it via IG and YouTube. Mm-hmm. I have like a cursory knowledge of the New York scene, but I don't know how I'm perceived or how I'm received, and I'm just never in New York enough to kind of. It's like an unknown quantity to me. Yeah. So then I had this show at Bell House, which is like hip Brooklyn and shit. And then, like, you, you, I mean, you don't know how you're going to be. And it was just, like, so great. That's awesome. It was exceeded anything I could have expected. And then there's this added layer of, like, I'm never here, so the response is even greater. Right. And that's kind of neat. Yeah. I'm like, oh, cool. This scene that I really respect, I'm never here enough to get that kind of love is, like, cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you have any pre-show rituals? What do I do? Like, you know, it's it's your headlining weekend. You've got, you know, it's a Friday night. You've got two shows. You're in the green room. What are you doing? Mm. It's after, you know, you just did the seven o'clock show. You're waiting for the fucking nine o'clock show. What are you doing in the green room? I'm um, just chilling. I'm sitting on the couch or whatever. I'm on, <laughs> I'm on my phone. I'm drink. I like room temperature water. Okay. Yeah. Because if I do cold water, you already have, it's not like, you're not nervous. Like you're gonna pee your pants, but there's your your body's heightened before a show. Mm-hmm. Are are you or how are you when before you go on yeah, stage? Yeah, I definitely stuff? will pee a, bu- a bunch. Uh, okay, but do, do you like do you vibrate a little bit or no? Only before a showcase, which I I just can't wait to, for this feeling. To the go thing away. that doesn't matter yes, makes you the most nervous. Before a regular show, I literally am not nervous for some reason. Oh, that's cool. But so I, yeah, so I think like. I'm a little vibrating, kind of. And if I do cold water, it'll, like, make me shiver a bit. Oh. It'll kind of make me, uh, yeah, shiver a little more than I'd like to. So room temperature water, does it doesn't make me, like, cross that threshold. Mm. This is, like, weird body. I like that. Yeah, body chemistry, FYI for me. That's what I'll do. I'll drink room temperature water. Maybe I'll go over my set list. Yeah. I guess that's about it. Yeah, I don't really do anything... Do you do? I don't know. Like, I feel like I should be. Like, sometimes I will, like, write affirmations or I'll journal. Mm. If I feel like, what am I doing? I've been on my phone. Like, this is crazy. I cannot be on my phone right now. Then I'll, like, journal my thoughts or I'll write affirmations. You're the best. (laughs) No. Keep Like, the artist way has, like, these affirmations in them. So, like, I have them in my phone and I'll, like, write them out. But they're, like, you know. Right before you hit the stage? Yeah. Hmm. But then sometimes I'm like, I feel like it's like a little too much. I I feel like I don't know how to. I know some people like listen to music, but I feel like Just weird like heavy metal doing really that if I'm like in a green room with someone else. Like the opener is in there and I'm just like. <laughs> yeah, I know everyone has different rituals and stuff. I think for me, I, I want to make it as. I think I was talking or I was I watched a thing about Stephen Colbert talking about when he would do Groundlings or, or a Second City like slipping on characters almost as easy as a hat. Mm. And I like that for performance too. I want to be able to just, I would like to be as effortless as just like talking to you, blah, blah, blah hanging out, maybe going over set list and then going on stage. Like if I have to put headphones in, everyone's different, so I'm not knocking yeah. it. But just for me, if I have to do all this extra stuff and then like do cartwheels backstage, like I'm going to war. Yeah, I feel like. That's really nice that you but, put it that way. Well, it depends stylistically as well. Cause I'm, I think for me, I like, being, having jokes and being personable and kind of, I don't know, like that type of demeanor. 
I think if I have headphones and shit, then it's like a me versus them type mm, mentality. Like, yeah, it's like a game. Well, yeah, like a war. Like I'm going to fucking crush these motherfuckers who came to see me. Or, yeah. Then it's this like adversarial me versus them type of show where I want it to be more inclusive and let's have fun tonight. It's weird because like I really can't – I'm going to pull some cards, but I can't get out of my head this like – the, the When I started asking comics this question, like pre-show rituals, because I went to see like a concert and then I was talking to like uh, the drummer mm -hmm. and we we're talking about pre-show rituals and he has like the craziest pre-show rituals. Like the whole band, like they don't eat the whole day before, which I get for a band, right? <laughs> this guy, he doesn't eat the whole day. He calls his mom before every show and then like he listens to a specific song. And I was like... Like, yo, you're just playing drums. No one's watching you. You no. don't gotta you don't gotta do all this shit. I was just like, whoa, like I'm not doing shit before I go up. Like, this is like maybe I could be taking it to the next level. So I started like asking literally like everyone, like, what are you doing before you go on stage? Like, if people are out here calling their moms. Hey mom, I'm about to play drums again. <laughs> um I just wanna let you know that I love you. And if anything happens to me out there, um, you raise a great kid and um I gotta change my pants. I'm so nervous. I'm that. crampled. Like honestly, if I called my parents before a show, like that would not be a consistent, reliable thing for me to do. Like I, that could really make my mood go either way. That phone call, how that goes. Sometimes I'm like, I have a show today. I cannot talk to you. <laughs> I'm pretty good. Like the not eating thing. I I can eat. I think my first special. I literally crushed like two kebabs yeah, before I, could, I went out and shot. I could eat as long as I don't feel like so bloated I'm going to fall asleep. I could I could have a lovely meal. The only thing I can't do is like I can't be like high before I go on stage really. But I've done it. But it's like mm. not ideal. You know. I've never done that. I've never. Yeah. But yeah. I think the, the best that – is when I'm just like genuinely excited that I get to be in front of these people. I'm like, I'm yeah. excited that I yes. get to see these people. I'm excited that I get to share with these people. And that's when I do the best. Just like when I have that feeling and I'm not thinking about my own performance. I'm just like, I'm excited to see these people. That's, and it's not about me. That's my best operating point as well. Just like gratitude, happiness, and joy, and shared experience with this room. Yeah. And like positivity. Yeah. Like, that that's the best. Um, Will you shuffle this? Yeah. Have you ever had your tarot cards read? No. Okay. How do you shuffle? I mean, so these cards Just are so like, big. Just like you know, see. Do do it like cards, like. When you're like performing at like uh, <laughs> a. Um, oh. Like if you're in Vegas performing at a uh, what are they called? I mean, I haven't. What, Damn, a, a casino. Whorehouse? Do you um a whorehouse? Do you sleep with the no do you do you like play cards and stuff i'm bad no i don't even like yeah i forget how to play poker i learn like every five years and then forget one yeah. time i was shooting this movie this like tina fey movie so i was in new mexico for like a month they had me out there way longer than they needed me to i'm like barely in the movie but i'm there for like a fucking month just because they have money to burn i guess yeah so i'm just stuck in new mexico but uh, they would play cards, like the director would play poker, and they love wine. So there's like cracking open all these bottles of wine, and I'm like, I gotta go to this. I got invited, so I would like go, and we would play poker. That's fun. I'm like, I better learn how to play poker because it's like a good career opportunity. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm drinking all this wine, <laughs> and like, it was so much wine. One time I got back to my ho hotel and I just started barfing like wine. And just like red. I'm like, how are they drinking this much fucking wine? <laughs> And I can't tell the difference. They're like, this is a such and such. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> I'm just like such a poser. You're just, just like, like <laughs> oh, I play poker all the time. What is it, a mall back? Mm. <laughs> well, I'm going to retire early. Good night. Good. <laughs> blah. <laughs> blah. Is there anything in your writer? No, I have no. Although sometimes <clears throat> my agency or like they'll just boilerplate writers from other ones you know what i mean mm. so one time i was doing some comedy club somewhere it's like not even a, a hot market or something and they picked me up in a limo <gasps> that's so funny and i'm like what why it's in your rider and i go oh and then i told my i'm like hey can you take this out i just feel like a piece of shit that's you know what so i mean funny i'm like in south dakota or something they're picking me up in an 80s limo or something <laughs> like so unnecessary like i don't want them to think that i need that a limo like to <laughs> 
Um, okay, if you at this point in your career could say something to like your younger self that like got booed off stage in the Apollo, Ooh, what okay. would you say? Appreciate the journey. You want the things, you're, but you're looking at the wrong thing. Like the things are a byproduct. The journey, the journey. Be, be happy in the journey. That was good. I guess, yeah. That was good. Appreciate you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because then um, the things you want will just come naturally mm. if you love the work. I like that. All right. Appreciate That's a good the journey. Mix. That was good. Okay. All right. Let's see. Should I pull one card or three? You know, do you want a little like, what are we feeling today? Or do you want a little past, present, future? I don't know. Like, <laughs> this is all new territory to me. All right. I'm going to do past, present, future. Okay. All right. The Hierophant. That's good. The, oh, interesting. I love that. And, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Listen, I'm getting better at reading the cards. We're still going to reference the book here. Okay, in the past, you had like a mentor or a teacher. Did you? Maybe. Yes, don't we all? We all had teachers, right? Suppose it's uh, it this is this was like your hunger for knowledge. You know, it, it was either practical, spiritual. You came as far as you could on your own, and then someone like kind of helped you out, and and you opened your heart, and and your teacher appeared. So that was really nice. Mm -hmm. that, that happened in your past. Yeah. So shout out to, to that teacher. To teacher and all teachers. And all you teachers. don't get paid enough. Okay. Um, then your present is really nice. This is kind of saying the two of so the two of wands is like you're on the right path. That but you've been good. working hard. <laughs> like you're on the right direction. You're going in the right direction. You know, you're on your way to success. You focused on a goal and have boldly pointed all efforts in that direction. So this also the wands is like the mind. So become aware of your thought patterns, specifically about yourself. So are you treating yourself well on the journey? Make sure you're treating yourself well because you're, you know, you're on a good journey right now. Okay. All right. Then we've got the. This says you get hit by a bus. Six I'm like, it says that in there? We're going to see the Six of Swords. Um, oh, wow. It just couldn't be a better reading. For really? You, honestly. Holy shit. So, okay. So first, like you get, you have this mentor, right? Then you're like on the right path, and then like you're, you're recovering from any difficult times. You're traveling. You're resting. You know, this is um, this is kind of like recovery from any difficult times. Yeah. Wow. This is just like, you know, kind of you're refueling. It's it's hope at last. It's traveling. It's uh, you're resting. You're revitalizing. You're surrounding yourself with joyful friends. So, I don't know. I mean, this card kind of confuses me. I'm gonna cross reference it honestly. Which one? The, the swords card. I'm really getting sucked in here. I'm sorry. Not so. I mean, we gotta be. I, I just we gotta be that thorough. Feeling, like you know, when you're looking at your phone for a long time and then you realize where you are. But I wasn't looking at my phone. I was looking at a tarot, the tarot deck. card. Yeah. Okay. Um, we are at it's a the cute little size book. It is. I just got it. I love it. Okay. I always love when they change the dimensions of things and people are like, oh, it's like just you're, you're in a business card and it's square. It's just too like, fun. Ooh, I should buy a house from the square business card guy. It's so different in this book. Does everyone have a different interpretation? It's almost like religions. Like even tarot cards are like, well, kind of. We believe this. Mm. <laughs> Give it to me straight. How long do I have to live? I don't know. Like basically, like you're gonna lose a little part of yourself. No, for real. <laughs> no, wait. But it's and, a good omen. Am I am I losing a part of me that's been holding I'll me back? I'll just read the whole. Yes, yes. So this is good. It is good. I'll read you the cards so I don't butcher it and freak you. Out. Okay. <laughs> what, if, what if, like, because I have to do a bunch of other podcasts and stuff. Like, after I get this reading, you see him on other podcasts, and I'm just like, hey, um, you have a special coming out. It's called House Money. It's on my YouTube channel. Um, it's, like, chock full of laughs and stuff. Uh, I filmed it at Zany's in Nashville. Um, it's, like, it's important to celebrate the joy in life and everything, you know. 
we're all, we're all going to ruin die. you with the temper. Yeah, we're going to die someday. I wonder how many people might affect this way. Yeah, it's gonna be on my YouTube channel. You, you guys should check it out. You should like uh, hit, smash that like button and stuff. <laughs> um, I'm on TikTok. Okay, so the Six of Swords <laughs> thrust the. I don't. What is a quarant? It's like driving me a quarant. Yeah, a quarant. I have no idea. All right. Well, do we look Q, it up? Yeah, yeah. We really oh, need yeah. to know. It's, it's called me- okay. A, a, a okay. Q, quarant or Q U E R E N T. Q U Q U E R E R E N T. E N quarant. Okay. Noun, a person who asks a question or makes inquiries. Okay. Especially so of an astrologer, fortune teller, etc. So you're you're getting thrust down an unrestricted course. <laughs> I'm getting thrust down an unrestricted course? <laughs> yeah. You know that in order to proceed, you have to leave something important or a part of yourself behind. This is a time to strongly navigate the intense turmoil to pull through and beyond the sadness of detachment. Your rite of passage is a good omen, and soon the sense of loss will be replaced by a renewed acceptance of change and into a new terrain. Not all bad. Okay. I have to part ways with something that has, like, serviced me thus far in life, but it's now a hindrance. Yes. I'm like uh, a caterpillar, caterpillar turning into a butterfly. You know, it could be like, I feel like it's like a breakup kind of thing. You yeah. know, it might not be that bad. I mean, it could be your studio apartment. It could be. You may, maybe your studio apartment has helped you this far, but now it's time to get a one bedroom. I'm already. I got a three bedroom townhouse in Tarzana, baby. What? I made it. All right. So, oh, you you. Don't I'm have, in the valley. You don't have the studio anymore. No. So why are you talking like that? Well, I'm saying that's that's that that's was like to give you. Yeah, yeah that's the yeah, yeah. frame of mind I was in. Maybe you need to leave behind the three bedroom in Tarzana. But I thought I thought that's the pinnacle of living. Okay. So you mean I could have a not shared wall? Something has got to go in the future. in my life and and you'll be better for it something's got to go <laughs> also it's just a card let's let, let's not be blasphemous here you know maybe don't it's... disrespect the tarot like that <laughs> just a card it's just a card <laughs> jesus you are on the right path your mentors have helped you that's true and uh you oh. are definitely going to succeed all your goals you know Pointing straight ahead, you're on the right direction. You're succeeding. Yeah. So the only thing is, you'll let go of one tiny thing. You know, maybe your merch line. It's not servicing you. Oh, I know it's not. <laughs> is that simple? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Drop the merch. Maybe those t-shirts. Who's wearing them? No, I don't know. I haven't seen. I haven't seen it's your okay. merch. I, I haven't mean, seen. I haven't seen. What is your merch? Like a, What's your I merch? I barely have. I think it's on my. I mean, I'm, IG, I just have like one of those stories things like merch. What is it? It's not great. It's okay. It's probably good. I really don't. I'm, it's all right. Some company was like, hey, we want to make it. I'm like, okay. I'm just so bad. I'm lazy. I'm like, going to buy it now. No, you're feel not. Guilty. No, you're not. If you do get the Lance one, that's the most exciting one. My merch is running out. I also don't, I don't like have enough confidence to like think people want to wear my shit. You know what I mean? Do you have enough confidence to be like, I need the money at the end, though? No. What? Uh, no. You're just like, whatever. Well, I'm also, I don't have that fashion gear and stuff, and I'm not like, I want to design this, blah, blah, this is part yeah. of my brand. So you're just like, eh. Yes. Yeah, I get that. And then, like, I don't want to send suitcases to a city that I'm performing it's in. It's crazy. And then, like, hey, guys, I'll be selling these, blah, 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 blah. Do you do meet and greets after shows? I like to meet people afterwards, yeah. especially because I've entered this new territory of, like, people wanting to come see me yeah because so much of my career when you're just like an unknown touring comic people are going to see comedy they don't know who the fuck you are they're just it's like date night yeah and you're in indianapolis and then you're doing jokes and they're like getting mad yeah and they're like what the fuck yeah like they don't don't even know they don't do any research they don't know what kind of type of jokes you do and anything right so you're just playing the people who went to see comedy as a genre yeah. So and now I'm going to cities and people are like coming for me. Yes. And that is like I'm so grateful. And it's it's neat. And I you know I want to meet the people who actually want to come and who came and want to you know because it's, it's fun for me too that uh, you get to like match faces with like hearts on a screen because like yeah. on social media and stuff it doesn't feel real like it doesn't it doesn't you're like okay it's different when you see faces and as you're like opposed you're real to, you actually yeah. like support me and care right because then it feels real yeah like hearts are 
It's a. Then you see their comments later, and you're like, "It's you from right, the show." Right? Yeah, yeah. You can match them up and stuff. Oh my god, I went to. I, okay, we have to end, but I went to a concert with my mother. Um, it was like this girl. She, she was like just. It was her first concert, mm -hmm. and my mom is like a big fan, and she was doing mean great at the end. My mom's like. I, it's not like I want to buy merch, but I got to meet her. I'm one of the commenters. I was like, okay, like let's go, like let's let's meet her. Yeah, we met her. It's great. That's awesome. It was fun being on the other side. Was she appreciative and stuff? Yeah, she was nice. That's nice. Yeah. Well, come on. <laughs> All right, could she could have done better? My mom was like going up to her mom uh -huh. and being like, "Your daughter's amazing." I was like, this is what so you've cute. Done. You, go, you, don't you don't talk to me. You don't say this about me, Mom. You? I wish you were my daughter. No offense, Natalie. But I mean, she's so good. The singing. She's great. The funny, but I mean, singing. You can't sing like this. I mean, you know this. Try singing your jokes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Fahim, where can people find you? Uh, they could find me on Instagram, so at Fahim Anwar. And then YouTube, where the special will be. Uh, House money! Whoa, yeah. So YouTube.com slash Fahim Anwar. And then TikTok is Fahim Anwar Comedy because some other Fahim Anwar got it. That's fucked. It is pretty fucked. I, I'm he only has two videos, too. I have the same on Instagram. This dumb bitch is Natalie Whoa, Cuomo. Not, and I'm Natalie Cuomo underscore. This is outrageous. Fuck. Have you, like, hit her up and be like, Hit. Years ago, but I, I what'd you do? She said no. I think other people hit her up for me. I didn't directly. Oh. You should do it personally. I feel uncomfortable. And offer up some money. How much? What's it worth it to you? Mm. Five, five hundred. Five hundred. That's your top. I feel like she should do it out of the goodness of her heart. People don't work like that. Like she's just be like, you know what? I'll do it for you. That's nice. Yeah, but you gotta ask. Mm. Or yeah, I guess you don't have to. You're doing fine without it, right? Yeah. Don't worry about anyway, it. Anyway, TikTok, Instagram, TikTok, TikTok, IG, and then I, you know, I do a thing. I think like maybe a couple times a month, I'll post this like series called Fahim Works on Stuff, where I just work on a bunch of material at the comedy store, mm -hmm. and I just post those sets to my YouTube as well. That's fun. Yeah, so I people like can see the process of like working on jokes and stuff. So just feeding the algorithm before these like big art drops, you know? I like that. Yeah, because I mean, you can't drop a special every month. And then so much of being an entertainer nowadays is like being a part of people's lives week to week. You can't just drop art every two years <sighs> anymore. Tough. Yeah. You have to like be in their lives week to week. And also, algo god. What, you need to feed the algo god somehow. Feed them. So this is my offering to the algo gods week to week. Is my Fahim works on stuff series on Your YouTube? Your YouTube, uh, YouTube, just you got so much good stuff on there too. Thanks. So. I'm trying to have the Algo catch though. The Algo God doesn't give a fuck about your boy. No, Algo God. Can you talk to the Algo Gods, please? I'll have a talk tonight. Thank you so much. I'll put your photo on my uh, little Mr. Altar. Beast altar. Yeah, yeah. So thank you, and uh, thank you guys for watching. I will see you next week. Bye. 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 Bye.